On the night of February 5, 1978, snow began to fall on New England. Three days and 55 inches later, the Northeast was covered in a white blanket, paralyzed by the blizzard of 78. They uh, just said it was going to be just a, a small storm, and, uh, and um, so people just took it at that. It was snowing, n not too much in the beginning, and then it just kept snowing and snowing and snowing pretty hard. They were just telling you that there was a snowstorm coming. I don't think they at the time realized uh, how much snow that we were really going to get. It just kept getting more and worse and worse and a lot more than what we got. We came out and it was sleeting and windy and really, really bad out. We turned on the news and of course they said there was going to be a storm, but they did not predict how severe it was going to be. We were just lucky that we came home. The storm formed when three air masses combined over New England to form one big storm. A high pressure system over eastern Canada trapped the blizzard south of the New England coast, causing heavy bands of snow to loop over the area. I was on the uh, TV uh, listening to the news weather, and they were explaining, well, we're going to have a storm. And, uh, and at the time, okay, they said, well, we're going to get some uh, uh, fairly decent amount of snow. Didn't say how much. We were shopping. We went to the mall to pick up some things and we came out and it was really nasty out and blowy and sleety and we were supposed to go up to northern to south western massachusetts but we decided that it was just so miserable we would go home and it was a lucky thing we did we heard it on the tv we heard it on the radio but it was uh, nothing out of the ordinary we were just going to have uh, some snow and uh, we just uh, took it as it was coming and it uh, didn't realize that we were going to get as much snow as we got. The storm had incredible strength with sustained winds at 65 miles per hour. While a typical nor'easter brings steady snow for 6 to 12 hours, this blizzard continued to dump snow on New England for 36 hours. It snowed and snowed and snowed. It was a lot of snow. In fact, it was so much snow that we didn't even attempt to shovel out right away. We just stayed put. Um, in the house. Uh, we were looking out the window and as the snow in the storm was getting worse as it kept going we looked out the window and I said to my wife I said look at the snow it's halfway up the cars okay then I looked out again as the snow kept coming down and coming down and by the time the snow was done we couldn't see our cars it was all snow. At times snow fell at a rate of four inches per hour Many people were not prepared for the severity of the storm. Weather forecasting has become very difficult in New England, and its reputation caused the public to ignore the initial warnings. People just thought we were just going to get a little bit of snow and that was going to be it. So I don't think the public was prepared for it at all. They definitely were not prepared because there was a lot of uh, uh, things going on in the cities, uh, in all the towns, okay? Definitely not prepared. They didn't have enough trucks. They didn't have enough sanders. They didn't have anything. Not expecting this because of the fact that they didn't really know what was happening. Throughout the Northeast, people became trapped in their homes with snowdrifts of up to 15 feet. Many employees at major companies were sent home early so not to be caught in the storm. However, many others were trapped at work for several days. People were stranded uh, on all the routes coming and going to Boston for days, some of them. Uh, in fact, there were uh, a lot of, a number of deaths, I think, from people who kept their motors running and asphyxiated in their cars, little children that were left in cars with them. They get to the point where you couldn't open your door. Uh, you couldn't get out at all. You couldn't, you couldn't get out. The snow was piling up and it didn't do any good to uh, uh, go out and try to shovel because it was uh, snowing too bad. So everybody just stayed in and uh, waited till it was over. We were in the house here for four days. And uh, we didn't plan on going anywhere, couldn't go anywhere. There was no transportation of any kind. Four days had gone by before we moved the first car out of our parking lot. I owned a car and it was totally covered with snow. Um, you couldn't see it at all. It had snowed so much. First of all, just getting out 
being able to get out your door and then uh, finding where your car was because it was buried and then no place to throw the snow because we had so much of it. In total, 3,500 cars were found abandoned and buried during the storm. In Boston and neighboring cities, traffic was banned, causing people to walk and some ski. People were skiing uh, down the street and skiing over parked cars because that's how deep everything was. Well, you couldn't go anywhere, you couldn't do anything. Uh, we had a, a neighbor that had a snowmobile and was able to get out and uh, just kept going up and down the street uh, over and over again, which gave us a pathway just to get out and uh, just walk. That's all you could do. There was you, nothing, nothing else you could do until the plows were able to get out, and that wasn't for days. By that time, maybe the third day, the plows had started coming through a bit, and you could walk on the road a bit. But sidewalks and pathways were really impossible. In New York City, schools were closed. The majority of the interstate system had to be shut down for a week, along with plane and train travel. During the news, um, there was a lot of people stuck in airports uh, because they couldn't get to Boston. And I'm pretty sure that uh, the places all over the country, uh, places like uh, Chicago, uh, probably California, all those flights coming into Boston, uh, they knew that they couldn't do it. So there was probably a, a real major holdup uh, in all the airlines, okay, trains, buses, uh, whatever. Because of the high rate at which it fell, the snow could not be removed quickly, causing it to pile up. Giant bulldozers had to be used to plow the snow. A state of emergency was declared in the states affected, and the U.S. National Guard was called up to help clear the snow. When it became very apparent that it was a very severe storm, then the governor uh, said that there was a state of emergency, and he would get on every single day and talk and tell us what was going on. The storm caused a heightened sense of camaraderie. Neighbors helped out each other with transportation and supplies. We all helped each other. I think it uh, brought people closer together. Um, uh, people that, when once you did get out and got in, outside, uh, you know, people were uh, all in the same boat. They were all trying to get out and uh, all talking to each other and couldn't believe that we had as much snow as we did. And everybody helped whatever, each other any way that they could. When we finally got dug out enough to walk out, we went over to a neighbor, um, and they were completely blocked in. And I remember walking. You could barely walk because it was thigh high at least, and probably in some places even higher than that. But we just felt we had to, to get into because they were kind of alone and separate and kind of upset. So we did walk over there. Well, what happened was... We, uh, we had a guy who lived next door. His name was John. And we, uh, when we knew we were stuck and we couldn't go anywhere, we looked out the window and it happened to be a snowmobile. And this guy, John, came up with the snowmobile, come upstairs, knocked on everyone's door, and asked us all if you people need any shopping of any kind, like a list. He made a list. We gave it to him. He went shopping for us on a snowmobile went all to the places with the supermarkets where you couldn't even get into a supermarket, he said, because of the snow. But they were open, and he brought all the groceries back, okay, and he kind of brought them in, and he passed them out to everybody. So we never went out without any uh, milk or coffee or food that anybody was shot on because he did it with his snowmobile. There was a kind of uh, camaraderie about meeting neighbors and chatting about what you had and what you could get and sharing what you had. A new tradition was born in New England known as the bread and milk runs. At the word of a storm, everyone would hit the supermarkets, leaving the bread and milk shelves empty. Once people were able to get to the stores, what, what, whatever was there was gone uh, very quickly. And there were days and days before they got any more supplies in. So whatever you had in the house was what you had. When the road cleared somewhat and we could get a path out here, we walked to the supermarket, and there were many people walking to the supermarket, and they were not, not very well stocked, but enough so that you could get by and for what you had in the house. But it was a week before everything went back to 
deliveries and people getting fresh supplies. But we did walk, and people were walking and dragging sleds, and then whatever they found in the market, that's how they would get it home. A lot of people were walking on the streets from the grocery stores, holding bags, and uh, so a lot of people traveled by foot to go there shopping. After the storm was over, the affected area was paralyzed for over a week. Approximately 10,000 people were forced into shelters. 2,500 houses were damaged. 54 people were killed. And there was $2.3 billion worth of damage. I remember what a terrible feeling it was to think that you could be so caught like that and have no control over your um, environment so that you could move around and get out. It was not a comfortable feeling. It was just a, a whole different uh, uh, atmosphere with uh, things that had hap that happened in the storm. It was, uh, I guess it's something that we'll all remember. Very, very unexpected blizzard. Nobody expected to what we saw that day. The blizzard of 78 would never be forgotten in New England and will be classified as one of the worst storms to ever hit the area. I'm George Rico. Good night. Oh, the weather outside is frightful, but the fire is so delightful. And since we've no place to go, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. It doesn't show signs of stopping, and I've brought some corn for popping. The lights are turned way down low. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. When we finally kiss goodnight, how I'll hate going out. And